dear artists out there. Um, I'm Zhenya, Zhenya Gershman, the founder of Z Art Academy. And here I am. Hello, welcome. You're in my art studio. Um, this is where I teach, this is where I paint, but this is where I'm also going to invite you from all over the world to join and learn more about various techniques um, and advice on oil painting and things that I've learned that work the best for me. So there's not only the way, there are many ways, but I'm going to share what is successful in my practice and I want it to become available to you here via these video recordings. So today we're going to talk about number one, lesson number one. If you are into oil painting, what kind of the question would be, what kind of brush do I use to paint in oils? And the brush is an extremely important tool. Um, it's almost more important than anything else in your oil painting practice. So I'd like to begin with this. And here you will see some of the assortment of my brushes. And I'm going to explain to you what I love about it. So first of all, if you went to an art store, I always pick up the brush. Let's pretend I'm purchasing this brush. And I look at it, but I touch it with my finger. And what I'm looking for is a kind of a resistance and supple, beautiful resistance. You see how this brush is giving me a gorgeous edge. It's not too soft. It's not losing its form. So for this, I prefer a synthetic brush. In this case, um, I bought these uh, brushes. They're called Princeton, Princeton brushes. Um, they're available online. They're available in different stores. I buy mine in Blick Art Store uh, here in the local in the neighborhood. You can also, like I said, get them online. And you want a couple of them. First of all, these Princeton brushes are very long. There is a reason why they're long. You see, if I'm going to stand away from my painting, I want to be able to watch myself paint. I don't want to be too close up or I'll lose the perspective. So this long handle allows me to actually watch what I'm doing. The other thing that I love about this, you'll have um, an arrangement, you have a selection. You can have a flat brush. This is a flat brush. You can have a rounded brush. Let's see if we can find one over here. This is a round tip brush, or you can get an angled brush like this. This is an angle brush. So we have an angle brush, a flat brush, and a round brush. Um, each one will give you a slightly different effect. My two favorites are the ones here on the left. So these are the brushes that I don't like to live without. And the two sizes that I love that allow me to do almost anything I want with my brushes is size six and size eight. Various brands will vary. So when you buy size six and eight in Princeton, that will be my size that I love, but in other brands it might be different. So how can you tell? You can actually see this is size six. It's about the narrowness of my nail on my pointing finger. And size eight, this is going to be size eight, is more like my thumb. So you could see that this is like a thumb, it's size six, size eight. And this is size six, like my pointing finger. So you could kind of see and judge for the scale uh, when you purchase these brushes. So again, synthetic, flat, long handle, uh, size six or size eight will just do the job. You want to have a couple of six and a couple of eight because when you're mixing your light and dark colors, um, you don't want it to get muddy and cross-contaminated. So it's nice to have at least four brushes, two in each size. That's what I would recommend to start from. Um, now, the trick with the brush is actually not just the brush, it's how you hold it. So almost every student, when they come into my classroom and they're about to paint their painting, this is, and tell me if you're guilty of this, this is what I see them do, okay? This is how we write. The reason we write like this, we hold the pen or pencil like this, because we want to have little tiny minute variations for the letters. But in a painting, you want a much larger range of motion, much bigger range of expression, beautiful brush strokes. So simply change your brush. You see how it rests 
into the nook between my two fingers, between my thumb and my pointing finger. Instead of holding it over this way, put it below. This is how you want to hold your brush with a handle below your wrist, not above like you do for writing, below. Simply trying that change at home, you will notice how your painting will change dramatically. It seems like you're losing control, but in effect, you get a range of motion and can make beautiful brush strokes. So this is very liberating. Don't worry, you can always revert to this if need be, but this is a much better painting habit. The other trick with brushes is, Often, and we'll talk about palette and color mixing at another occasion, often a student will ask me to mix a color and show them how to mix the color. I'll show them a demonstration, it works perfectly. Then the student takes the same color and it looks different when they paint. Why? It's very simple. It's the pressure with which you hold your brush. If you press the brush harder, the color will be more the hue of the color, the brilliance of the color will be more intense. If you press lighter, it will actually change the color of your, or the hue of your color, and it will be lighter, less intense. So we should be very, very much um, attentive on the pressure of the brush. That is part of our huge technique, varying the pressure. Most of the time, you want to feel as if you're caressing your canvas. You want to love your art. You want to caress it. It's a very sensual act. Uh, very few times you're actually going to be attacking your canvas and kind of struggling with it. Most of the time, it's a real soft, barely touching. The less, the more effective your technique will be. So practice at home uh, on a little canvas, the pressure and seeing how the color will actually change based on the pressure of your brush. I want to also mention that there are no bad brushes. Here you could see that some of my brushes are arranged in different ways. So when they get what most people would probably call this starting to get a bad brush, and I have even a worse pile, when they, the bristle starts to separate and it looks kind of yucky and I can't get, all I can do is little dabs like this and it has no control. This type of brush will be great for effects. For instance, painting hair or fur or other amazing uh, effects for textures. So there's simply no bad brushes and I recommend to arrange your brushes from brand new um, and by size if you like, so you could clearly see it. And as they wear down to the parts where you think you're never gonna be able to use them, and one day you're gonna be able to pick up that ugly brush and it's gonna do an amazing trick for you. So I never throw away brushes. I have piles, bouquets of brushes in my studio.